We're going to get started in just a moment. Thank you for joining us for our kingdom prayer call uh, on tonight. Uh, we praise God for your presence here uh, on this evening. Listen, do me a favor. Uh, if you are uh, using your phone or electronic devices, I ask that you will put those uh, on mute or mute the televisions uh, and radios behind you uh, that you would not bring in any uh, interference uh, on tonight. Uh, I also invite you to, to share this. Uh, those of you who are uh, watching via Facebook, uh, share this to your page. Uh, those of you who are in our Uber conference page, I thank the Lord for those of you who have called in, as well as those who are watching uh, via their, their computers. I am uh, excited about what the Lord is doing in the midst of ministries around uh, this world, uh, as we as we draw to our knees to hear a word from the Lord and, and ask God to, to give us a word, God never gives a word without also making preparations for His people to to hear the word. And so I am I am excited about what the Lord is doing, even uh, in the midst of this technology. Uh, certainly, we will want to be in each other's presence. Uh, in churches, in our conference centers, in our Bible study classrooms. Uh, but this is the season in which we are in. And that season does not afford us the opportunity to gather person to person. Uh, but I thank the Lord that he placed it in someone's mind, the thinking. Uh, he placed it in someone's mind, the ability uh, to bring technology to life. Uh, that God saw this even before it was and knew that we would be using technology uh, to study uh, his word. So I'm excited uh, for what the Lord is doing. Even under these circumstances, the Lord says that this is the day that he has made and we shall rejoice and be glad within it. And so regardless of the circumstance, listen, we talk all the time about mountains uh, we talk about valleys and dry places and deserts. We, 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 we always talk about uh, the valley lows and the mountain highs. We talk about rivers that seem uncrossable and burdens that we cannot bear. Uh, now we're not just singing it. You know, we're not just talking about it. We're not just preaching about it. <laughs> we're living it. And so we have to decide what we're going to do in a time like this. Uh, we sung it. We prayed it. Uh, now we have to live it. And, and this is uh, a testing of our faith. Uh, and you can only have a testament after your faith has been tested. And you have a testament, which means there is a testimony that you share of what God does even in the hardest of times. We are living uh, in those times today. Uh, we're living in a, in a time in which we, we don't know uh, what the next day will hold, uh, but we do know who holds the next day in their hands. And so that's the reason that we have to celebrate. That's the reason why we can wake up in the morning and in spite of the conditions and still say good morning. That's the reason why we still have joy in our heart and a praise on our lips. Listen, God's word is still being written. It's being written through you. For you are the living testament uh, of what God is doing even in the midst of this trial. So again, thank you for joining us on this evening uh, for our kingdom prayer call. I'm going to give you uh, just a, a short word uh, in just a moment. Uh, but but we want to we want to start off with prayer. We want to pray for those uh, who are going through uh, a 
day does not has not taken us by, uh, that we have not turned on the news uh, to see more people infected or more people who who fallen victim to their life being taken. Uh, countless calls that I have received uh, from members of the church uh, and other persons who ask asking me to pray uh, for their loved ones. Uh, not just because one person uh, has been affected by the coronavirus, but two and three and sometimes four people uh, and a whole family uh, that has been impacted by this. And so we want to pause just for a moment before we get into the lesson for tonight and just offer up a prayer. Lord God, we thank you. For certainly this is the day that you've made. You tell us to rejoice and be glad in it in spite of the circumstance, the condition, the worry, the aches, the pain. In the midst of our trials and our tribulations, this is still your day. And so, Lord God, we thank you that you will have your way, Lord God, and just lead us and mold us and guide us during these times. Prepare our heart, our mind, and our soul that we may be receptive to the word on this night. Give us a word, Lord God, that penetrates. Give us, Lord God, a word that provokes. Give us, a Lord, a word that prepares us for this season that we're in. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Listen, our scripture for tonight comes from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah, the 26th chapter, verse 20. It simply says, Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. Come, my people, Enter into your chambers, shut your doors behind you, hide yourself for a little while until the indignation is past. I want to encourage you all on tonight to shelter in place, to shelter in place. That has been uh, the message from some 20 plus states across the U.S. That as this, this issue, this pandemic, of the COVID-19 coronavirus is wreaking havoc across this nation. Uh, the governors and mayors, elected officials, have set out decrees, executive orders as they call them, uh, telling residents uh, to shelter in place. That if, if you are not an essential worker, uh, if it's not a life-threatening issue, uh, then they, they tell us that we need to Stay where we are, to stay in your homes and do not come out. And for some of us, that's a challenge. Some of us wrestle with the idea of not being able to go as we please. Some of us wrestle with the notion of someone else controlling our movement. Some of us take issue with the thought of someone telling us about our coming and our going. And because we take issue with it, we, we come up with rationale, excuses as to why we don't need to obey. No one should, should be able to tell us where we can go 
and tell us how long we can stay. But no one should be able to infringe upon our liberties, uh, that we have the right to, to exercise our liberties in such a way in which they are not hampered by legislation or political positioning. We, we wrestle with it. And too often, this wrestling that we have, this, this rebellion that we have is, is not just against government, but sometimes it's against God. Sometimes in our own journey, we, we wrestle with what God instructs us to do. We wrestle with God when he answers our prayers, not in the way that we expected God to. And so whether it's, it's government or God who, who tells us to shelter in place, we must understand that the order to do so always serves for our benefit. That the that, that, that reason why we are instructed to stay where we are is because there is danger that is lurking. There is an issue that can disrupt us. And so a order, a decree has gone out for us to shelter in place. Tonight we find ourselves here with Isaiah prophet of God to God's people who, who writes this epilogue to a song to address the people. He starts off by saying to the people, come. In other words, he entreats them to be at peace doing this convulsion by which their oppressors would be punished. He, he tells them to come, to come in, to come close, that I have something to share with you. Imagine seeking shelter in a time of a storm that is raging. Storms that, that blow, storms that rage, storms that are often the greatest threat to life. Something about storms that, that poses a significant threat on our lives. I don't know, have you ever been in a storm? Have you ever been in a storm and was thrown capsized and your life was threatened and you thought you were drowning. Understand that just six inches of fast moving water can, can knock over an adult. Understand that just two feet of rushing water can carry away vehicles. I'm reminded of the story when the disciples were with Jesus. They were crossing a lake when a fierce storm arose. And the Bible says that waves began to crash over the sides of the, of the boat and threatened to sink it. Ironically, while the disciples were, were frantic, literally they were fearing for their life, the Bible says that Jesus was on the back of the boat asleep. The context suggests that they were trying their best to bail the water out of the boat to keep it from sinking, and they were not trying to disturb Jesus, but soon they discovered that it was losing battle and that at some point in desperation, they awaken him. As I'm reminded of the story, it caused me to ponder. I began to wonder 
What were the disciples really expecting Jesus to do? Did they merely want Jesus to, to lend a helping hand and help them bail out the water? You see, because this was early in Jesus' ministry. And he had only done a few miracles. So were they really expecting Jesus to rise up and calm the winds and the waves? To me, it seems that their expectation was less focused on the storm and more focused on their well-being. In other words, they, they had a despairing cry in their attitude because they said, we have done all that we can. And it's obviously not enough. So they turn to wake up Jesus, to ask him, is there? And I'll study this evening. Isaiah 26 is all about praising God for God's sovereignty care over God's people. To offer up a praise to God for God's sovereignty, for God's power, for God's positioning, for God's authority. So chapter 26 speaks of the deliverance of people from captivity. You see, when, when the children of Israel were initially led into captivity, they were doubtedly would have despaired had it not been for encouragement such as these promises. So Isaiah composes this song even before the calamity occurred. He writes this message, this song. He pins these words even before the despair. I have a question for you tonight. What song, what word have you hidden in your heart that when calamity happens, you can find it? What, what word is, is hidden in your life that not even despair can disrupt it? What word is hidden in your soul, but not, not, not a virus can claim victory over you. Isaiah knew before it was, and therefore he wrote this 26th chapter to bring words to a people before the calamity happens. So while the storm rages, they were extorting to bring calm and peace. Listen to the song. Come, my people, enter your chambers. And shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. He tells them to enter into their chambers, to enter into a place of retirement where the storm of indignation cannot affect them, to enter into a place of safety where enemy cannot reach them. God is speaking to us in this season. That he is calling us to enter into our chambers, the place of retirement and safety where no weapon formed against you shall ever be able to prosper. This isn't the time to, 
to run to the store every day. This isn't time to make home visits every day. This isn't a time to try to figure out what you need to fix in your house so you run to Home Depot and Lowe's every day. No, God is telling us to enter into places of safety where the storm of indignation, where your enemy cannot reach you or affect you. Because he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Enter into your own chambers. Chamber in your house. Inside of your house, hide thyself as it were, wait a minute. You tell me to enter into my chamber and while I am in my place of safety, you tell me to go further and hide myself. <laughs> Some of us have taken shelter in our homes and feel that the enemy is trapped inside with us. Some of us are locked up in our homes and the storm is raging in the inside and no one sees it. So we pray, we pray tonight for victims of assault. We pray for women and men who are in abusive relationships in their homes. And so even in this word, God tells us that even in your home, hide yourself. That do not mingle in the scenes of the battle. Don't partake in the general calamity. Don't expose yourself even in your home. Some of us are afraid in our home because all we do is watch MSNBC, CNN, and Fox News all day long. Some of us spend our time all day in our home on Facebook and social media. Some of us spend our time in our home all day texting and emailing and posting pictures when God is saying to you that even in the safety of your home that you need to hide yourself in my word. What else do you have to do? Get up, eat, watch TV, homework, Laundry, bay. But what better time? What better scene? What better scenario? Why, why, why there is nothing else for you to do and you are confined to your home that to find in your home a hiding place in God's word. Just want to encourage you on tonight. Don't take this time for granted. Don't, don't waste the time that God is giving to us. That this is the time when you spend it with God. This is the moment in which you study God's word. This is the time when you meditate. This is the time when you go into a season of fasting and praying. This is the time when you lift up the songs of old. This is the time. Hide yourself where you are. Because Isaiah says it would only last for a little moment. 
he implies that the war would not rage long. And I know, I know that you all are looking at the news, trying to, to figure out how long it's going to last. <laughs> and I, I understand that, that we look to see how long the kids are going to be out of school. We look to see how, how long I'm going to be off the job. Isaiah's word encourages us. He encourages us and says that it will only last for a little while. In other, in other words, it's only going to last for a season. Weeping may endure for the night. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy will come in the morning. This will only last for a moment. That somehow the God is going to calm this storm. That somehow this battle will not last forever. But somehow those of us who feel as though we are in captivity will be set free. But God is preparing us. And it's only for a little while. He says it will last until the indignation comes. Not the indignation of God against God's people, but the storm of indignation against their enemies. That, that somehow, soon and very soon, this too shall pass. That the storms of war will cease to rage. And that we who are God's people will be delivered. And when we come out, we come out mighty. When we come out, we come out safe. When we come out, we come out strong. Listen, we are focused on this season, but every season that God brings us into is designed to prepare us for the next season that God is taking us into. So don't spend all of your time focused on what's happening in this season because God has already given us instruction for this season. And what God is instructing us to do in this season is only preparation for what God wants to take us into in the next season. I, I wish I had somebody who understood tonight. That everything that, that is taking place is designed to prepare us. That what we are going through in this day is preparing us for our tomorrow. Listen, there's always, there's always a plan for God. And even in the midst of where we are, God is calling us to restoration. God is calling us to be restored to our rightful place in his kingdom. We have established our own kingdoms with our own rules, with our own government, and even with our own currency. And God is saying that I will use this time to bring my people to their knees, to call on to me like they used to. You know how you used to pray to God, how you used to sing songs to Zion, 
how you used to spend all day in church. God is calling his people to return to the place where they came from. My grandmother used to sing a song. The song would simply say, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. We've done everything humanly possible to make church convenient for people. And in our rush to be expedient, we've forgotten about God. In our rush to make Sunday morning microwaved with a short prayer, short song, short scripture, and a short word, we have forgotten about God. And now we're wondering when will the when will the order be lifted? Why we can't go to church on Palm Sunday? What's going to happen with Easter? When we going to go back to church so we can uphold our covenant and God's word to not forsake the assembly of saints together? What difference does it make? When we showed up late and we left early. What, what, what difference does it make when, when God's people couldn't stay in church longer than an hour? What difference does it make when, when you had every excuse as to why you couldn't come to Bible study in Sunday school? And now, for some reason, we want to we wanna demand that the government lifts the order. That somehow, church should be deemed essential. The church has always been essential. question really is was it essential to you that even in this time God says was not essential can be essential if you replace what's been essential Why focus in a building when God does not dwell in buildings made by, by man's hands? You are the temple of God. And what's essential is not the church house. What's essential is not our sanctuaries. What's essential is if you have prepared your life to receive God. You want to run to the church. But the first thing you have to do is open up your heart and allow God into your life. Let God's word hold you, keep you, minister to you. That you might be a blessed and minister to those 
who are around you. We've taken for granted our luxuries. We've taken for granted our liberties. And so now God is speaking to us to enter into your chambers. Hide yourself there. Just for a little moment until this indignation has passed. My prayer for each and every one of you on tonight is that when it's all said and done, that your faith would have been strengthened. That your walk would have been strengthened. That your relationship with God would have been strengthened. Because God has, has kept you. And even in the midst of this pandemic, God still remains God. God bless you on tonight and may heaven continue to smile upon you.